Living on a narrowboat and continuous cruising around the country with a car can be hard work, what with finding parking and mooring. Sometimes you have to go miles before you can find parking, and of course, when you cruise, you then need to go back and get the car. But oftentimes, if the distance is over five miles, this can take over two hours, and is often more exhausting than the much better alternative cycling. This is the Tiro U1, an electric pedal assisted mountain bike with three different power modes, along with seven Shimano gears on the back and three on the front. Also, with mechanical disc brakes and 29 inch wheels, it also has a headlight powered by the battery and all this for £547. Well, that's for the 26 inch version, but this is the 29 inch which is still at an amazing price of £589 and you can get it cheaper with the coupon in the description I think for what you get this is great value for money I mean the Carrera e-bike counterpart at Halfords is near enough a thousand pounds that's almost double and a standard Carrera mountain bike is close to 400 and I have to say the build quality is close to if not better than the Carrera right so everything that comes in the box is of course the bike the saddle and two boxes let's have a look what's inside the boxes first so the first box contains our lithium battery which I have to say is very well secured and packaged it also comes with two sets of keys so you can lock it onto your bike so people can't nick it our second box comes with lots more goodies to start off with we get a little multi-tool set with all the adding key sizes you'll need a flathead, a phillips and a few extra things then we have our pedals which I'm slightly disappointed they're not metal but that doesn't matter too much we also get our quick release bolt here that goes in the front wheel in this little box we get our battery powered tail light we also get two spanners which are used to put on our pedals to the bike it also comes with a very handy manual which will show you how to build the bike. Lastly in this little box is our battery charger which comes with obviously a UK 240 plug. And this is the end that we plug into the battery. Now the bike is packed extremely well. I mean it took me about 10 minutes to get everything off of it. So don't worry about any damage in the post because there will be none. First we start by securing the handlebar in the right position and locking it in place using our handy little tool then we want to remove the bracket that joins the handlebars to the actual frame of the bike and after that we simply lift the handlebars into place and bolt on that bracket that we just took off to secure the handlebars and then we want to attach our headlight that we got onto the bike frame and then we're going to want to flip the bike over so we can attach the wheel taking off the protective covering and then the wheel just simply slides into place making sure the disc brake goes into the caliper and then putting on the quick release it's as simple as that putting on the saddle is super simple too you just slide it into the hole into a desired level and then you just flip over the clamp and then it's in place just like that now we we'll want to get our spanners and simply just attach our pedals to the bike and after that it's just as simple as sliding the battery into place locking it and you're good to go now let's take it for a test ride thanks to it being a proper mountain bike and not one of those foldable clown bikes it has no problems with bumps or puddles with its front shock absorber that has 80 millimeters of travel which is a little on the lower end but you don't really need much more than that unless you're doing intense mountain biking although with it being a mountain bike it would have been nice to see it have mud guards on it but mud guards are very cheap anyway and you can't really complain for this price the power assisted pedals definitely help with pushing through this thick mud though it's like a light push making less resistance on the pedals while making you go faster meaning less work for you now we're on a quiet flat tarmac country lane we can test the speed of this bike now the stated top speed of this bike is actually 15.5 miles per hour in the top assisted mode that's with a 75 kilogram load now i'm obviously a little more than that at 105 but let's give this a try starting with just manual power let's see how fast i can get on my own
All right, now let's try mode one. Finally mode free. As you can see, 18 miles per hour was my max. This is because the power cuts out about 15 and a half miles per hour. So it doesn't help me push above that speed. If you're fitter and lighter, you can expect to go faster, but don't expect the motor to help you out. Accelerating is really where this bike helps you out. You could start off in sixth gear and as soon as you push a little on the pedal, the motor taps in and pushes you. And obviously the higher the mode, the stronger the assist. I have to say though, mode one is hardly noticeable. You might as well just cycle manually, but mode two and mode three, you can really feel that push. Now for me, the number one hardest and most exhausting thing on a bike is cycling uphill. This is where I think electric pedal assisted bikes really come into their own. So let's just do that, take it up a hill. After all, it is a mountain bike. Right, so this is a fairly steep hill now, much like the speed test, I'll try this manual and with all three modes separately. Here we go manual, as you can see I'm in first gear here and it was a real struggle getting up the hill. Here's mode one. Not much of a change there. Mode two now. There was definitely some improvement there and I can tell you it did take some of the effort off my part. Finally mode three and you can just see how much that helped me out there. That was easy in comparison to manual. Here's a side by side. Now we're going to turn our focus on the opposite, going downhill. It's time to give this bike brake test. First on the flat at full out speed. Now down a very steep hill. As you can see the brakes are actually quite impressive, not an immediate stop, but not far off it. I'm actually really happy with their performance, I didn't think they'd be this good. Now the main reason we wanted this bike is to obviously go back and retrieve the car each time we cruise or take the car ahead. If you have an estate like us, you can easily put the whole bike in if it's the 26 inch wheel. But with the 29, you will have to take the front wheel off, which is a piece of cake with its quick release. But recently, mum has not enjoyed cycling with me, as it's a bit too much hard work for her now, she's in her 60s. But for me, I love the exercise, so I don't mind riding my manual Carrera bike. But for mum, this is exactly what she needed. Just a little assist to help with the cycle, as sometimes we have to do quite long cycles. Heck, our first cycle ride was over 10 miles something mum would have not managed before. But thanks to this bike, mum can now easily do 10 miles without even breaking a sweat. Even cycling over this massive hill, I was exhausted and sweating buckets at the top, but mum flew up the hill without a drip on her. Yeah. But a bike is still almost a requirement living on an airboat without a car. That's because you don't have a car, you need to instead cycle or walk to the shops to get your food or prescriptions. This bike makes doing the shopping run a lot easier, as you could be more miles from the nearest shop. Just put it in the full power mode and you really don't have to do a lot. Now what about the range? Well it's a 250 watt lithium battery with 13 amp hours. The stated range is 40 miles and we managed to get 35 out of it. Although the battery wasn't quite dead, it was on its last light and flashing, and it hit that about 30 miles. And after that the bike seemed to have gone on to reserve power, and it wasn't really helping out mum a lot. 
So although it wasn't dead, we did decide to charge it, as when it's on reserve power it really isn't that much use. But I believe you could easily make that 40 miles on one charge, probably even longer if you use the first mode and probably less if you use the third mode. But we've been mostly using the second mode, which we think is the best balance. Charging times for the battery depend on the state of charge. It's about four to six hours, which really isn't too bad. And if you top it up after each cycle, it's only going to take about less than an hour, which I think is the best practice because the lower you take the battery, the more potential damage you can do to it. So it probably isn't a good idea to run it dry. Now the downsides. The biggest one is the weight. The 26 inch wheel weighing in at 21.7 kilograms and the 29, our model, 23.5 kilograms. Now the battery alone weighs 4.6 pounds or 2 kilograms along with the heavy motor in the back wheel. To put that in comparison though, my Carrera bike weighs just 14.5 kilograms. That is almost half. Now it's not a problem with the power, you don't really feel the extra weight. But if you were to run out of power, you'd soon feel it. But it can be a big problem when you get to narrow stairs like this or even if you have to cross a lock gate with the bike. Now this would have been too heavy for mum to carry. Another downside is the lack of mud guards which I mentioned before. Also the seat could be a little more comfortable. The headlight is powered by the battery and has a button on the instrument cluster. Why can't the tail light have a button and be powered off the battery too? And mode one as we mentioned before just leaves something to be desired. It's kind of useless to be honest but apart from that we are over the moon with this bike i kept waiting for that moment when i'd say oh that's why it's this cheap but that never came the bike is outstanding for the price don't bother spending any more money on more expensive ones as to be honest you have everything you need on this bike the build quality is actually amazing for the price it actually leaves you wondering how they made a bike of this quality for that price I love the power delivery of the modes as well and the extra addition of a headlight and tail light. I especially like how the headlight is attached to the battery and has its own button on the dash. The quick release wheel and the seat are a nice addition too and I can't recommend this bike enough to be honest. If you have a car and live on a boat but not just that, having a bike on a boat is almost a requirement and if you're not interested in the exercise of cycling and just want a nice, quick and easy way to the shops to retrieve your car or go on a leisurely cycle, this bike takes all the hard work out of cycling. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you all enjoyed, please don't forget to check out the link in the description if you want to buy this bike for yourself and get a coupon code for it. Alright, see you in the next one, bye bye.